ever get that feeling like you read a news story and you just know there's got to be more to it? Like what you're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, sometimes you can just tell there's a whole lot more going on beneath the surface. Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. Morning Star Ministries. And let me tell you, this one's got layers. It's definitely one of those situations that brings up a lot of questions, not just about what's being said, the allegations, but also about leadership, accountability, you know, all the things that come into play in situations like this, particularly within religious institutions. There's a whole other dynamic there. Right. And for our listeners who might not be familiar, we're talking about a pretty big name in the Christian world, Morning Star Ministries. They're based in South Carolina founded by Rick Joyner. But what we're looking at today isn't their usual work. We're looking into some serious allegations of abuse and, frankly, a community that seems to be grappling with how to deal with it all. Yeah, and, and the scale of it is honestly what makes it so hard to ignore. Over 100, now, over 100 former staff people affiliated with the ministry, they've signed a petition, a petition laying out these allegations. Now, that that many people, that's not just a handful of people who are unhappy. That's a huge portion of their community saying, wait, something's not right here. It really makes you think, like, how does something like this go on for so long? And what went wrong? I, I mean, this petition doesn't hold back. It straight up calls it a corrupt and toxic leadership culture. Mm. And that, they say, is what allowed this abuse to continue for decades decades. I mean, just saying that phrase, toxic leadership culture, it just, I don't know, it gives me chills. Because what does that even look like day to day? And how does something that deeply ingrained even develop in the first place? It's the million dollar question, isn't it? Because yeah. it really points to maybe not just one person's actions, but like a systemic failing, maybe even something in the very structure of the organization itself. And sadly, we see this kind of thing play out again and again, these situations where there's this culture of silence or maybe fear that keeps people from speaking up. And that's the heartbreaking part, because for so many people, these religious institutions, they're everything. It's their community, their support system, a place where they're supposed to feel safe. And then when something like this comes out, it's not just disappointing, it's a huge betrayal of trust. Absolutely. And it's crucial that we don't lose sight of the fact that these aren't just, you know, abstract ideas we're talking about. This is real life with very real consequences. Back in August, a lawsuit was filed, an alleged victim came forward, and since then we've had two more. Two more alleged victims have filed suits. These are real people whose lives have been deeply, deeply affected by this. And if that wasn't enough, the way the ministry has responded, well, it kind of adds another whole dimension to this whole thing. The article we were reading, it quotes them, and I'm reading directly here. While we don't know at this point what more we could have done, we hold no malice or anger toward the young men or their parents who have chosen to file suit. Hmm. At this point, it's, well, it's very carefully worded, isn't it? It almost seems like they're more focused on what they didn't know you know, maybe could have done differently instead of actually taking responsibility for what happened under their leadership and the timing of that statement. It came after those lawsuits were already public. It wasn't like they were trying to get ahead of this to address it head on. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? I don't know. No malice. It just, I don't know. It feels, well, it feels off to me. Shouldn't they be, I don't know, shouldn't focus be on the people making these accusations? On making sure this doesn't happen again? Not on, you know, whether the ministry is upset about the lawsuits or not. It's an interesting point you bring up. It does seem to be missing that, well, that focus on the victims, right. on accountability. And it's especially noticeable when you contrast it with how strongly worded the petition is. Like, they're demanding Rick Joyner step time, yeah. right? Yeah. Resign. Because Rick of his comments, right? Exactly. And they don't mince words. They say, and I'm quoting here, demonstrate a lack of empathy, conviction, and commitment to protecting the vulnerable. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and keep in mind, this is coming from people who were by all accounts, deeply involved in this ministry. All right, like these aren't outsiders with an ax to grind. These are people who were there. Exactly. So for them to not only be calling for accountability, but to actually question, you know, his character, his fitness to lead, that's significant. It really makes you wonder how common this kind of thing is. Sadly, it's not unique to just this one ministry or even just to, you know, Christianity. We see these kinds of situations pop up in religious institutions, different faiths, different denominations all over. It's kind of disturbing when you think about it. Makes you wonder, 
are we seeing a pattern here? Like, is there something about how these institutions are structured? Or, I don't know, maybe it's the culture of unquestioning faith or the fact that no one wants to be the one to air the dirty laundry. Do these things create an environment where abuse can actually flourish? It's not easy to think about, that's for sure. But they are important questions, because if we keep seeing these abuse scandals and they're not isolated incidents, then we have to look deeper. We have to ask ourselves, what is it about the system itself that might be contributing to this? And then you have to think about, even for those of us not directly involved, like, what does it do to people's perception of religious institutions in general? It can't be good, right? Oh, absolutely. Each time one of these scandals comes to light, especially if it involves a well-known institution, it takes a toll. It erodes public trust, and not just in that specific organization, but in organized religion as a whole. It's that whole thing, well, if it could happen there. Exactly. If it happened there, where else could it be happening? And that's when people start questioning everything. So what do you do? How can people be smart about this? I mean, how do you know if an organization, any organization, whether it's religious or a charity, whatever, how do you know if it's legit? Well, for starters, don't be afraid to ask the hard questions, to do your homework. Like, how transparent are they with their finances? What about their leadership structure? Do they have a system in place for handling complaints? Do they take allegations seriously? These are all things people have a right to know. It's almost like, what can you even do? I mean, how can people protect themselves? And not even just themselves, but, you know, be able to help others who might be in a bad situation. Yeah, and that's such a key point because it's not always about us, right? Sometimes it's about looking out for those who might not be in a position to speak up for themselves. Right, exactly. And and that's where like speaking up becomes so crucial because if we just stay silent, who are we really protecting? If you see something that seems off, if you hear even just rumors or if something just doesn't feel right, don't brush it off. Talk to someone, file a report if you need to, make your voice heard. It's a lot. I mean, this whole conversation has been pretty heavy. It is. It is heavy stuff. But it's important, right? And I think it shows, like, it's not just about this one ministry, not just about South Carolina. This, what we've been talking about, this is bigger than that. This is about power and accountability mm. and how we, all of us, have a responsibility to make sure we're creating safe spaces, you know. And maybe even more importantly, it's about not just having faith, but having an informed faith. Like, it's okay to question things, right? In fact, we should be questioning things. We should be demanding transparency and holding people accountable, especially those in positions of power. So, I mean, what do we do with all of this? Where do we even go from here? Especially if someone's listening to this and they're like, I don't know, overwhelmed, maybe even a little disheartened by all of this. You know, it's like anything else. Knowledge is power. Stay informed. Find out what organizations are out there, groups that are fighting for victims, that are pushing for transparency and accountability, especially within religious institutions. Support them. And never underestimate the power of your own voice. Even just talking about these issues, bringing them out into the open, that's a huge step in the right direction. Absolutely. This whole situation is still ongoing, so who knows what will happen. But if anything, I think it's a reminder that these things, they can happen anywhere to anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's up to all of us to stay aware, to speak up when something's wrong, and to do everything we can to create communities that are safe for everyone.
Strength. <laughs>